Hey, it's Mike from The Mike Wagner Show. Thanks for tuning in to The Mike Wagner Show on Anchor FM. If you're interested in sponsoring my show, you can send me an email to themikewagnershow at gmail.com, or you could also donate to the uh, podcast. Just go to the Donate Listen site, and um, you can also donate whatever you like. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. For those who are interested, Anchor can give you everything you need in one place for free, which means right from your phone or computer. We've got creation tools. It allows you to record and edit podcasts so it sounds great. And they'll distribute the podcast for you so you can be heard everywhere. Spotify, Apple, Google, many more. And you can make money from the podcast with no minimum listenership. So download the Anchor app for free or go to Anchor FM to get started. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and the MikeWagnerShow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Hired by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable, custom web designs at blown a competition way. Call today at 1 800 303 3960. That's 1 800 303 3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the MikeWagnerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio, over 35 podcast platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and more. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Also, follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with a wonderful lady who wrote a book about caregivers. It's in the form of a Bible. She's a registered nurse, has owned and operated a healthcare company for over 20 years. She's a caregiver, lifetime advocate for patients' rights, and she also advocates this book very, very highly. It's also being used literally as a Bible for um, most as well, too, for caregiving and just simply, simply, you know, has a lot has a lot to offer and of course advice as well too especially in these trying times during the pandemic and live ladies and gentlemen from outside california we have the very very talented and compassionate of the caregivers bible ladies and gentlemen crystal glover wing crystal good morning good afternoon good evening thanks for joining us today Hi, thank you. That was a wonderful introduction. <laughs> well, thank you very much as well, too. Of course, on the preset as well, too. It sounds like you're a very, very caring lady as well, too. So you've been a registered nurse. You own and operate a healthcare company for over 20 years. You're a caregiver, lifetime advocate for patients' rights, and you also have a book called The Caregiver's Bible. And before I get into all that, um, tell us how to get your career started. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what uh, you said. No, no, I, I, I'm sorry. Um, tell us how you got your career started. Well, um, my, I was in college. I've been in college for a couple of years, and, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to major in. And I went to my mom, um, and I asked her, she, I asked her, I said, well, what do you think I should do? And she said, become a nurse. She was an LPN, which is a licensed practical nurse, uh, and so when she said that, that was pretty much what I did. I changed my major the next day. Um, I graduated from college. And six months to a year later, I started my first company. And I was in business for 20 years. Um, I owned a healthcare organization. Um, and I, about three years ago, I sold the company. And about two years ago, I became a traveling nurse. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and of course, um, and, and did you travel like in statewide or was it local or did you um, do like regional, national? And um, how far did you travel to uh, be a traveling nurse? Well, what I do is, I mean, you can travel to any state uh, in the United States and you can travel abroad, I'm sure. Um, but I, I picked a few states that I like that I wanted to travel to. So, I've done everything from corrections to hospitals. Um, I have a history in home health care and hospice. Um, so I've been pretty much 
you know, everywhere in there. <laughs> wow, that is amazing. And of course, you and of course, you graduated, um, you know, from nursing school and you jumped in right away to owning and operating a healthcare company. And um, what influenced you to um, go ahead and start a company right away after graduating from uh, nursing school? Well, um, I, I think it was more of an internal uh, influence. I just wanted to do some things just a little differently from what I thought out, out, you know, in the in the industry, and and so I just um, wound up uh, starting a well, I wanted to start a home health agency because I was working in home health, and uh, but there was a moratorium in Louisiana, and so I couldn't uh, start an age a home health agency. They basically stopped that. Um, so somebody from the Department of Health and Hospital said, well, why don't you do hospice? Hospice is available. And so basically that, that's what I did. But it was it was just to do something a little different differently um, from what I've seen in the industry. You know, I mean, even though I only I had only seen it for a short period of time, I just, just felt like I could do things a little bit, you know, uh, differently. Mm-hmm. And, and, and of course, with the the nursing you've done back then, how do you compare it to the nursing now as well? The medical field has changed dramatically. Um, uh, before, it was kind of old school, um, a little bit more on hand, um, maybe a little bit more compassion, and a little a little bit less paper and red tape. Um, you know, I mean, and, and, and don't get me wrong. I mean, everything needs to evolve. Um, but at the same time, it's evolved into a pretty much an extensive amount of red tape, uh, and, and paperwork documentation. And it takes, it pulls a lot away the time that the nurses and the medical staff have for patient care. Mm-hmm. And also, too, with the pandemic as well, too, and I'm sure that, um, you know, more strain is being put on nurses as well, too. And, and do you think uh, a lot of nurses will start stepping up and uh, helping out, especially there was a, a story I was reading about in, in uh, New York and New Jersey that had over 100,000 deaths with the coronavirus. And I was listening to an ad on the radio for an agency that's trying to recruit nurses from all over the um, United States to come to work in um, New York and New Jersey. and and I, and I guess the question is, you know, how big of a shortage do we have when it comes to nurses? And do you think uh, nurses that have been retired are most likely to come out and say, help out not just in New York and New Jersey, but say in their local area? Well, I mean, the shortage existed before uh, the coronavirus, and so it's only gotten worse. Um, I just think that, you know, it just depends on the nurse and, and, and their internal barometer as far as what's going to propel them to maybe come out of retirement or, or, you know, in order to help during this crisis. I think it just depends on where they're at um, mentally as far as if they're willing or able to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, basically, as a travel nurse, I can go anywhere. I can go in any state. Um, and it seems as if, it's, you know, with COVID-19, it, it's become... Um, the, the shortage has become worse um, and because they're, they're taking care of a completely new population um, of, of patients and people don't really quite understand the, the COVID-19 and, um, and, and you know, the particulars about this particular organism that, that uh, causes, you know, well, the COVID-19 or- organism. So I just think that it, it, it's going to be an individual decision. I don't think... There are going to be nurses, you know, pull out of the woodworks, but I might be wrong. You mm. know, I mean, you know, stranger things have happened. Mm-hmm. And, 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 of course, too, that um, we'll also talk more about, like, with um, today's world's increased caseloads, cost-cutting, managed cares, HMO, and, of course, demands being placed on as well, too. And, of course, we'll talk about the book and how to um, – handle all that but first listen to the mike wagner show at the mike wagner show.com powered by sonic web studios visit online at sonic web studios.com for all your needs look at a professional website without breaking your budget sonic web studios is the answer sonic web studios offers fast affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away call today at 1-800-303-3960 that's 1-800-303-3960 
or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the Mike Wagner Show.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Anchor FM, Google Play, Apple, and more over 35 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with author Crystal Glover Wing of the Caregivers Bible here on the Mike Wagner Show. She's been a registered nurse, owned and operated healthcare company for over 20 years, and a traveling nurse as well, too. She's a caregiver, lifetime advocate for patients' rights and you know, talking about the caregiver's book and, um, you know, just tell us more about it and what influenced you into writing about the caregiver's Bible. Well, uh, everywhere I've been in healthcare, and, and, and I've been a few different places in healthcare. Um, I, I've talked about the different uh, areas of healthcare I work, but I've also, I also was the primary caregiver, or the caregiver, only caregiver of my mother who, who passed away about six months ago. Um, I've also been sick. Uh, and very, very sick to where my mom had to kind of be the caregiver for me. Um, so one of the things that I have seen um, and experienced in, in, in some ways at, at different points in, in time is that caregivers um, and patients, a lot of times they just don't understand what's going on um, with their health care or their loved one's health care. Um, they go and they get they go to the doctor if they have an issue, and the doctor gives them a diagnosis. He says, okay, well, um, the issue you have is diabetes, or the issue you have is high blood pressure. I'm going to go on ahead and order these medications. And then at that point, they need more information as far as how to manage this illness. Um, a lot of people seem to, to, to think that it's just medication. They take the medication and everything is well. But there's a lot of work that goes in to managing this illness to make sure that they don't wind up in the hospital or back to the doctor's office um, for problems related to that issue. And so I have seen so many people who've had a diagnosis or, you know, a doctor said you have this particular illness. And they thought, for example, somebody with high blood pressure. And they thought, okay, well, I don't add soap, salt at the table. But they don't realize that the sausage that they ate this morning or this afternoon is, is laden in salt. They, don't, they think they're in compliance with their, with their issue or their illness, but they're really, really not. And so that, that's one of the things that I've seen uh, time and time again. And I've seen patients go into the hospital and the hospital personnel will say, well, they're non-compliant. And so I go in, I've always gone into my patients' rooms just so I can have a better understanding. So I ask them, well, what does this diagnosis, okay, the doctor said you have diabetes. What does that mean to you? The one, what is diabetes? What does it do to your body? And what does it mean to you? You know, as far as the things that you need to change to, to deal with this, this, this illness. And nine times out of 10, they didn't know. They couldn't tell me. So you can't be non-compliant when you don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that, that's... Mm-hmm. Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. So that's what propelled me to write the Caregiver's Bible to give people more power. You know, for them to understand that some of these disease processes. I talk about diabetes. I talk about Alzheimer's. I talk about you know, renal, renal failure and a lot of things that people don't understand that they may be experiencing or their loved one may be experiencing so that they can be ahead of the game as far as managing these, these issues without necessarily having to go run to the doctor's office or, 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 for these, or even worse, to allow these small issues to become big issues because they're unaddressed mm-hmm. and then they wind up in a hospital bed. Mm-hmm. And, and how about uh, mental illnesses like PTSD or or seasonal affectionate disorder or a, a mental uh, issues like PTSD? Is that covered in the book? Um, I don't mention, I don't talk about PTSD, but I do talk about dementia. 
Um, Alzheimer's is a form of dementia. It basically um, it hits the elderly population or older adults. Sometimes it hits adults that are maybe 40s or 50s, but that's that's more of a quirk of faith. It doesn't happen that often. Um, but I talked about dementia as far as the broad spectrum issue that mm-hmm. a lot of people may have. You know, you can get dementia in a variety of ways, um, but Alzheimer's is one of the most common forms of dementia for an older person. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you talk about managing major illnesses as well, too, like you said, with diabetes, high blood pressure, or constant pain. And what are some of the other major illnesses that um, people need to be aware of and, like, get a hold of the problem without running to the doctor constantly 24-7? Well, I talk about renal failure. I talk about um, respiratory failure, like COPD, um, um, emphysema, those types of um, diagnoses fall under that umbrella. Um, cardiac failure, which is heart failure to some extent. Um, and, and then I also go over the diet um, that support those those issues. Um, because that, I think that gets a lot of people in trouble. Um, because when you have something like cardiac failure or renal failure, it, the diet is really more important. I'm not saying it's more important than the medication that the doctor prescribes, but it's all important as far as basically a person maintaining their level of health. And I, when I say that level of health, okay, what I mean is a doctor can give you a diagnosis and you have this problem, okay? And that problem can be something that you can live with and manage and you can be almost as good as normal Mm -hmm. um your body can be almost as good as normal now if you don't address and manage that problem properly then you can have some real issues you know and i'm not trying to scare people but it's just i mean when i say real issues i mean you know there are problems that people can manage and, and live with for 20 30 years and there are problems that people cannot manage and not live, you know, so I, I don't, you know, I don't want to scare anybody, but I think knowledge is very important because we only get one opportunity to have this body and we need to do what we can do to best take care of it. Uh, and in the day of COVID-19, you know, knowledge is power. It's, it's, it's running to the doctor's office or running to the hospital, getting sick in the hot to go to the hospital is not something that you should want to do. Um, you should try to avoid it. And if you have the information basically at your fingertips, then, you know, that, that'll that go a long way, in, you know, as far as helping people stay in their homes. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the book talk, talks about uh, handling emotional issues and maybe some of the more common emotional issues and some of the more complex maybe you tell about um, how to handle certain emotion it, emotional issues and what's probably like the most complex and most difficult and how to handle those. Well, it talks about caregivers and what they go through um, because a lot of people don't realize the intensity um, and the, the stress of being responsible for someone else day in and day out, someone that you love um, or care about at, le- at the least, and, and you don't want to see them going through some of the things that they go through. So caregivers have their own level of stress. And, it, and one of the things that I also see in a lot of caregivers is that they don't take time for themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so many of them are so just, just directed, which is good, at taking care of their loved one and making sure their loved one's okay that they're not taking care of themselves. And they risk, you know, really, really doing damage to their bodies. You know, and, and, and I always tell caregivers, number one, you do your best. You, you know, try not to stress out. Once you, if you've done your best and you have nothing else to worry about, the other thing is you have to take care of yourself because you can be so hell-bent on taking care of somebody else and not pay attention to yourself that you'll be dead and gone, and that person will still be around, and they'll wind up being okay. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and I think that's very important, too, especially during the uh, pandemic, COVID-19. It is very, very important to take care of yourself as well, too. And, of course, you know, and of course, for those uh, who aren't able to go to the hospital, and of course, you're a traveling nurse yourself, too. And there's also 
home health care, retirement homes, assisted living facilities, board and care homes, day treatment programs. We'll um, get into those and how to get those established and some advice. But first, listen to the Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1 800 303 3960. That's 1 800 303 3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the MikeWagnerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and over 35 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel and follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with author Crystal Glover Wing of the Caregiver's Bible here on the Mike Wagner Show. And she's been a registered nurse, owned and operated a health care company for over 20 years, and also a caregiver, lifetime advocate for patients' rights. And um, also for those who aren't able to go to the hospital, there's also home health care, retirement homes, assisted living facilities, and more. You can just um, tell us about uh, the home health care and, um, you know, what are the options, how to get started, and, um, you know, some advice and things people need to know about when it comes to those. Mm-hmm. Right, right. I talk also in a book about um, the different services that are available uh, to patients in their homes. And so that the public um, or the caregivers can understand what's available to them. Um, because a lot of people seem to be confused about that. And then not just that, once you select a service and they come in to, to give to do an admission, um, to, to admit whoever your loved one is, they don't necessarily, not, they're not going to necessarily tell you everything that they offer. Um, and I think it's important that the consumers understand what they're supposed to offer so that you can know, so that the, the consumer can know what's available to them. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, what's the uh, most important things that um, one one should know about? You hear all these ads like, you know, your loved ones will be in um, a really nice place at uh, such and such a place or some have like, you know, a pool, spa or golf course or anything like that. Or, you know, or just simply like a single level. And what are some of the most important things that people should ask? Not just, hey, this looks nice and cost this and everything else. It's like, what are some more intricate things that people should really, really, really need to know about? Well, um, it depends on the, the facility, but one of the things that they should ask is um, the nurses. I mean, what's, what's the nurse to patient ratio? I mean, how many, how many patients does one nurse take care of? How many patients does one nurse and assistant take care of? Because that affects you directly. And even though every state has a requirement, they implement requirements um, as far as, okay, okay, you can only, I'm just giving an example because different states are different, um, but a, a, a nurse and assistant can take care of max 10 patients or a nurse and assistant can take care of maximum 20 patients which uh, that's, that's a really high number, so it's probably more like 10 patients. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can handle myself. <laughs> I think it hit my limit as one. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the thing is, different facilities, are they, they do things differently. Some of them are going to do it a little bit better than others. I mean, some of them are going to say, hey, look, the Department of Health and Hospital says, you know, each nursing assistant should have maximum 10 patients, but we're only going to give our nursing assistants six patients or seven patients. You know, those things make a, a difference because if, 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 if the nursing assistants and the, the, the nurses aren't in, inundated with patients, if they don't have, you know, just a, a lot of patients, they have more time to, to devote to each, each patient individually. Then I say, it, as a caregiver, it's very important that you go meet the staff, especially if you're sending your, your, your loved one into a facility. Go meet the staff. You know, see what their demeanor is. Um, because if you, you, you walk up to somebody and you say hello and they don't smile at you, you know, then that would 
maybe should ring a bell and say maybe maybe this is not the place for my loved one. Yes, they may be having a bad, bad day, but at the same time, that's not your responsibility. Um, so it, 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 And then the sense. If you're sending your loved one into a facility, if you walk through that door and you smell urine or you smell feces, then it's generally one of two things that's happening. Ooh, okay, it's, my. It's either they're not, you know, taking care of the patients as promptly as they're supposed to, and the smells are lingering, you know, or they just, um, you know, they just just don't have it together. I mean, it, 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 I mean, basically that's what that boils down to. I mean, if the smells hitting you at the front door, then I would be concerned. That would be red flag one for me. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and, and, and and also too, there's also patients' rights involved as well too. Your lifetime advocate, and why our patients' rights are so important, and what do patients really need to ro- know in terms of their rights? Right, right. I mean, you, as a patient, I mean, the, the rights are absolute, pretty much. I mean, they have the right to refuse care. They have the right to know who's coming in to to their room, and they have the right. To confidentiality and privacy, they, their rights, they have a lot of rights, which is a good thing. And so it is important that they know their rights and that they make sure that people are honoring, you know, the medical staff are honoring their rights. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and what are some of the patients' rights uh, that are most common and what are some of the patients' rights that it's little known but should be um, should be executed? Well, I, I think one one right that seems to get infringed on too often is the right to privacy and confidentiality. And I don't know, I might get in, I don't want to get in trouble with that one. But, um, <laughs> shh, shh, hey, hey, you're safe with me and all the million listeners. I'm kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, 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 that's totally understandable. That's one of the big things, too, especially with uh, social media and everything else. You got the HIPAA Act and, you know, whatever else. And besides the um, the privacy rights and what are some of the rights um, that they also have and some of the rights that they don't know about, but they should have and what they need to know about. Right. Well, I mean, they, they have the when when I say privacy and confidentiality, I don't mean, you know, any the staff or putting patients' information out on Facebook. Um, but I do think that sometimes people have a tendency to talk about patients and patient information with people that um, if they're not involved in that patient's care, then they shouldn't hear anything about that patient. And so that's really what I'm referring to. Um, but as far as and then you just asked me a question and then I, I forgot, I'm sorry. <laughs> no no that's no that's okay. You talked about the most common patients' rights and also what is the uh some of the patients' rights that even patients don't know about or nobody knows about, but but it, but it should be executed like a little known patient right that um uh, nothing's ever been explained okay. about. One of one of big, big patients' rights that I think get overlooked is basically you have the right, like, for example, if a patient wanted a service, like, let's say it's hospice or home health or whatever, I see, I've seen too often that the medical um, personnel will infringe on that right. You know, they, just because they like this particular company, they, they too often try to push their patient in that direction. And the reality is the patient and the patient's family, they have the right to go with whoever they want to. Mm-hmm. And, and and that's something that a lot of a lot of patients a lot of don't really understand. They you know, that's really giving the medical professions just a little bit too much power. If they say that they want this company, then that's who they should be able to go with. Um and, and so that that's that's something that a lot of people don't understand. A lot of people think that because the doctor says that that's the company that they use, that that's what they have to do, and that's not true. Mm-hmm. And, of course, they're tied to a second opinion as well, too. And do you think that the reason why a lot of these doctors and uh, facilities push for the service is like, is it is it for, like, um, trying to secure for a patient, or is it more for uh, financial gain? 
I mean, there are a lot of different reasons um, why doctors select certain services, and some of them are for noble reasons. You know, I mean, sometimes, you know, they, they, they've had experiences with really a company that's been really good, you know, as far as taking care of their patients. So, I mean, I, you know, you would hope that that's the reason for that decision when that happens, you know, and I'll take that reason, okay? But at the same time, if it's not, if that's not the reason why you're making this selection for this patient and basically telling the patient that, hey, look, this is this is who we go with and that's just what it is and your opinion in that does not matter, that's, that's where I, I, you know, I, I think the line should be drawn mm-hmm. as far as that's just, that's just a little bit too much control and it's not necessary because ultimately this is this patient's life. You only get one opportunity and this is it. So if you decide that that's what you want, then you should be able to get it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's very true too. Once again, author Crystal Glover Wig of the Cares Givers Bible here on the Mike Wagner Show. You've been a big inspiration. Learn a lot from me. I thank you for your time. Love to have you again sometime in 2020 and beyond. And uh, speaking of 2020, what are your upcoming plans for this year and beyond? Will you expect a new book coming out or or anything like that? I appreciate that. Um, but I, I'm an aspiring screenwriter, so I've been working on um, some projects that are very different from, from this book. I, this book is a labor of love. I just wanted to give caregivers and patients the information that that they need to get so that they can navigate the medical fields um and but this is not something that i plan on doing with the rest of my life Mm -hmm. Uh, but i wanted to help people and and that's what i've done so my direction now is very different (laughs) Mm -hmm. and i think that's an amazing direction you've done too and you say you're gonna be working on a movie right now called labor of love and um did you just start it, or is it in the works, or when can we expect uh, Labor of Love being released, or whatever well, movie you talked about? No, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I wasn't clear. This, this, the Caregiver's Bible was a labor of love to help people. But actually, I started working on... Uh, I, I've, I've, I've written different screenplays, and I shot a film, a short, that I'm working on now. Um, and also, um, I have a, a friend that I'm collaborating on, a, you know, something as far as screenwriting uh, with. So we'll see what direction I go in. Uh, <laughs> that, we'll see how everything turns out. Oh, that, oh that'd be amazing. I'd love to see a Caregiver's Bible uh, come out in the screenplay as well, too. So you're keeping yourself going. This is great. And a couple more things with uh, Crystal Glover Wing, the Caregiver's Bible, and the Mike Wagner Show. Who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Um, probably, well, I mean, as far as screenwriting is concerned, or should I, overall, my career as far as nursing and different things like that, and Kegel was Bob, it's my mom. My mom was my biggest influence. Um, and so that's, you know, and, and as far as the screenwriting, I mean, I, I definitely look at Shonda Rhimes uh, as far as influencing me in that area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm looking forward to your screenwriting as well, too. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Look, let me tell you something. You just don't quit. You don't quit. If there's something that you want, you just continue to go after it. And eventually, everything's going to work itself out. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the best advice there is. Once again, Crystal Glover Wing, a big thank you for your time. You've been fantastic. She's the author of The Caregiver's Bible and The Mike Wagner Show. A big thank you for your time. Looking forward to having you again soon. And uh, once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact you? And where can people purchase your book? Okay, great. Um, actually, I have ebooks on Amazon. And I have my website where uh, it's called well, it's www.thecaregiversbible, with an S, no apostrophe, dot com. And I have paperbacks available on, on a website. And then you can get a little bit more information as far as what the Caregiver, Caregiver's Bible offers. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, of course, once again, the website? www.thecaregiversbible.com. Dot com. That's www.thecaregivers, as in Victor, 
E R S B I B L E dot com. That is fantastic. Once again, a crystal big thank you for your time. You've been fantastic. Learned a lot from you. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor, keep us up to date. We'll love to have you back on sometime in twenty twenty. You've been fantastic. Thank you so much, Mike. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show.